name is Liz Parker and I'm a stylist mainly for classical musicians. It's more than just booking a photographer venue and outfit. What I do is I get to know the client, figure out who they are and pick their outfits and make sure their photos are beautiful. It's a two-part process. The first thing I do is I meet with the client on Skype or FaceTime to find out who they are as a person, who they are as an artist, to veto their clothing, which I often do, um, and suggest that they wear something that actually photographs well. That's part one. Part two is I'm on location, on site during the shoot, uh, directing, assisting, helping, and being the vanity police and making sure they look as good as they possibly can. Well, I remember going to symphony concerts when I was quite young as a child and seeing a photograph of a soloist and he may be 35. And then someone closer to 55 would walk out and it looked completely different. And I remember kind of, you know, and being kind of upset by that when I was seven. And um, as I got older, I realized that a lot of people don't know how to get a true photograph of who they are as an artist and I wanted to do something about that. And I love fashion, I love the art of being true to oneself, and obviously I love classical music, and I put them all together in this. In the classical music world, there's still a bit of a stigma about vanity and marketing, and there really shouldn't be. Everything's visual now, you know, there's social media and internet, and everyone has a website. And Back in the day, um, people would find out about concerts by ruffling a newspaper. Now, they're all finding out about concerts by scrolling on their device. All the more reason that the photo has to be amazing. And a lot of classical musicians have this sort of lofty idea that they should be really working on their Brahms. And I agree with that. But um, if you want people to come and hear your Brahms, you better look good in your photos. It's very simple. Liz, welcome. Welcome to the studio. It's nice to have you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a great honor. <laughs> and uh, welcome everyone to the competition studio. We're recording this conversation for later release. We've just been hearing about Liz Parker from Liz PR in Toronto. Liz is the founder of Liz PR, uh, a stylist and brand consultant, as she mentioned, mainly for classical musicians. Liz, how did this all come about? Well, this came about... Um growing up i was a pianist uh, studied music and i've also been interested in optics and how things come across and how things look as well as how they sound and i started um, styling musicians for their photo shoots and it sort of evolved into what i'm doing now mm -hmm. making sure that they wear the right outfits for their photo shoot on stage and it even uh, leaned into the personal area of what to wear on a date, that kind of thing. So it, it all became, it all grew very organically. And so in your video, you mentioned you work with mainly classical musicians? Yes, uh, because that's my background and I grew up in a musical family and I studied music and went to concerts. So it, it seemed like a very natural fit. I understand what a musician needs in terms of comfort when they're practicing or performing. And now let's say in a community of musicians who, I mean, primarily think it's most important how I sound, it's important uh, how I play and how I perform. Why is the image important these days? Well, you know, in, in the beginning, it was always about how you sound and it, and that still is the most important thing for sure. Mm -hmm. But now we're, we're hearing about concerts online. Everybody is on, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, not sure about Twitter these days, <laughs> but but everybody is online. And that's how I hear about a lot of concerts going on is people posting about it. And what do you need? You also need a picture mm. or a short video. So how you look has become more and more important. And I want to be, you know, I want to emphasize the fact it's not style over substance. The mm -hmm. substance has to be there. And I want to be very clear about that. I just want to complement that and enhance that since you're going to be photographed. 
Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that we plan to have this specific conversation today uh, on the second day of the finals of our competition here is that uh, when competitors are awarded a big prize and they suddenly have a ton of concerts, they also have a ton of media attention, right? Um, yes. So why is it important for them to make a good first impression, particularly when they become winners of a major international competition? Well, for something as prestigious as a Paderewski piano competition, um, you want to represent that organization. So it's not just about you, even mm. though musicians can often get into that headspace, they're locked up in a practice room by themselves for hours on end, you think about yourself and, and that, that makes sense. But you're also representing the competition, you're looking for an agent, you're representing, you know, the agency as well, to some degree. Mm. So I'm not saying to dress just for that, you have to be authentic. Mm. in in terms of your appearance and and i think what we're all looking for and craving is authenticity you know and there's the body positive movement like it's okay not to be thin and thank goodness for that mm. um but i i do feel in the classical world especially it's still very very conservative and i do understand that um you know, we, we have Europe to thank for all the culture and tradition of classical music. I mean, it was my my diet, my musical <laughs> diet growing up. Uh, however, I'm coming from a very North American point of view. I'm Canadian and style is part of the deal. I'm not saying it's mm. the only thing, but it's part of the deal. And I also noticed when I was uh, working in publicity for the Toronto Symphony, Vancouver Symphony, Roy Thompson Massey Hall, mm -hmm. sometimes there wasn't enough space in the in the newspapers to cover a classical concert. So I'd have to pitch to the lifestyle writers about maybe the lifestyle of a traveling pianist, finding access to a piano to practice, uh, mm -hmm. your diet, what you eat, exercise, all of these things that make you a whole musician. And part of that is wardrobe. So the reality is that in order to become publicly noticed or to get some media attention on classical music, there needs to be a certain image because there's, as you just mentioned, there's not a lot of space uh, for specifically classical concerts. Yeah, it's 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 not just, I mean, obviously, if you're reading an article about somebody, you, you might not hear anything if there's no video. So what's next is what you look like. And mm. and I want to be clear, I'm not saying everybody has to be fabulous and mm. fashion forward. A, a lot of musicians who initially come to me are concerned I'm going to give them a makeover and make them into something they're not. I don't right. want to do that. I, I just want to elevate uh, their appearance for the camera mm -hmm. and for the audience uh, as well and make sure everything photographs well that's the key it has to photograph well for a photo shoot obviously but you know here we are chatting on youtube and it's visual mm -hmm. so what you look like does matter just not at the expense of your playing and you mentioned in your video a, a great quote that I, I like to think about. You know, you can practice your Brahms, uh, and that could apply to any composer, but if you want people to come and hear your Brahms, maybe the, you can finish the, the sentence. Yeah. The marketing and the publicity, it, it has to look good too. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you started getting into uh, public relations, you were working for symphonies. And tell us a bit about that work you were doing. I was doing. Um, it's a lot of hustling. I, I was doing a lot of writing because there mm. was a concert every week. So I was writing, writing, writing. Uh, I was also coordinating photo shoots of the orchestra mm. and um, coordinating um, interviews for all the guest artists coming in and out, taking them to, uh, you know, the, the radio stations or television stations. So I was doing a lot of briefing. I was briefing um, the soloist on who the target audience is of this particular media appearance and suggesting what they wear. And when I was at the Toronto Symphony, uh, Peter Ungen was about to be announced as the music director. So I had a lot of media for him mm -hmm. and I actually had to pull outfits for him uh, to wear for photo shoots and all of those appearances. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I've noticed yeah. uh, when, when you said in your video that when you meet a client for the first time, there's a lot of vetoing their clothes. Yes. Um, what I do is, um, you know, sort of the wizard behind the curtain is <laughs> I meet I meet with the client first, just like what you and I are doing right now, because I want to see how they are in camera mm -hmm. and I want to see their clothing on camera because some things photograph better than others. Mm -hmm. And um, and I when they hold up something, I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, there is no filter. I'm, I'm like right there with Veda in terms of being very direct. <laughs> um, 
And then, um, then I, I uh, tell them what, what does work and maybe suggest a few things they could pick up to go with that. And mm -hmm. I also bring some accessories and, and things like that if, if they want it for, for both men and women. I have both. So I'm looking forward to getting to that. And we will get to my favorite thing interviewing you about, which is what you find photographs well and the accessories you always prepare for these. You've been listening probably to some of the interviews we've had here at the Paderewski. Uh, and um, you mentioned Veda Kaplinsky and probably you heard Vanessa Latarsh, our vice chairman of the jury, mention uh, there's something you can tell about a performer as soon as they walk on stage. Um, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on this for us. Tell us your thoughts. I loved when she said that because it's true. You know that it's almost a magical moment when there's a hush over the crowd and the door swings open mm -hmm. and the pianist is about to walk out. And, and, it, and it's always this... And, and I know everybody's just excited to hear the performance, but I have to admit, there is a part of me that's a little bit shallow, and I'm like, what are they going to wear? Right, right, of course. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, you know, when someone at the level of, you know, opera singer um, Renee Fleming, you know, walks out, of course, we're all dying to see what she's going to wear. And there's usually kind of a gasp or a sigh. Oh, and, mm -hmm. and I always want, I always want, people to have that reaction when they see a great photo like oh wow you look great mm -hmm. um so i i totally identified with that comment and it's part body language confidence and what you wear fits into that and right you know especially coming out of you know a two-year pandemic lockdown and all of that <laughs> some of our clothing's a little tight and and you know that feeling when you're wearing something and it's not comfortable it will come through in your playing, you, you, mm -hmm. you know, if you're physically not entirely comfortable, if you're a bit self-conscious. And yeah. I really want to eradicate that and make the performer comfortable. What is the uh, vanity piece that you mentioned in your video? What was that about? There's a lot of uh, self-consciousness around the whole idea of vanity, but the, you said there really shouldn't be. Yes. I mean, you know, it's all about extremes and just finding a happy medium. I'm not saying you should only be obsessed with how you look, but... <laughs> What I noticed is that a lot of classical musicians are hesitant to say, I want to look this way or I want to look that way. Mm. Or, you know, I've gained a bit of weight or lost a bit of weight and I'm a bit self-conscious. And they don't even want to tell me that. Wow. Uh, they're just self-conscious because they're, they're, they're noble. They're playing, like I said, Brahms or Chopin or Paderewski or Mozart. That stuff shouldn't matter. But I don't think mm. that's true. I think it's all part of the complete package. However, by the time a client has contacted me, I've already got them because they reached out to me. So they know on, on a subconscious level, it's important to have beautiful photos for their websites. They're, mm -hmm. they're already, they've already turned. So by the time I've got them, you know, I, I want to create a monster. <laughs> and tell us, what is the value of a really great photograph? And what is the risk of a really bad photograph? Well, this happened a lot when uh, when we were planning, you know, the season brochure, which is a big thing, you know, right. at any orchestra. And if the photo is great, we're like, ah, oh, yes. And it might be enlarged because it's a great photo. Mm -hmm. Or if you think about the editor of the the weekend listings, here's what's what, what's happening in Toronto. If if the photo is great, they will choose that photo to highlight your concert. How fabulous is that? And you might even make the cover of the program notes because usually program notes, they it might have, you know, a month or two months worth of concerts. Mm -hmm. So if it's a great photo, you'll, you'll make the cover. Now there have been situations where photos were simply unacceptable hmm. uh, because it was low res. So it wouldn't blow up. It'd be all grainy mm -hmm. or the lighting wasn't good or they didn't do any hair and makeup. And yes, men need it too. Um, so we had to not use the photo because it jeopardizes the integrity of the organization. Think about it that way. Right. So there was once a singer songwriter appearing at Massey Hall and we couldn't use the photo. So what we did was we, we, I think we used a, a, a photo of like a, a guitar and a microphone and, and the stool to symbolize they would be coming out right. and then wrote about uh, the musician that way. And, you know, we want to feature you, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So you've been part of planning committees for orchestra seasons and for programs. So the image of the artist that's being engaged, for example, by an orchestra is really very important. 
Yeah, I mean, I didn't, you know, plan any seasons. I didn't have that kind of power. But mm-hmm. um, when it, I did have choice in who I would spotlight to the media. And you have to remember, mm-hmm. publicists, marketing managers, everybody in the marketing department is running around in a panic, just trying to meet deadlines for today, next week, mm-hmm. next month, and you know, and on and on. So. The easier you make our job, the more likely we're going to feature you. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're a link between, okay, so I just was hired by the symphony. We have signed the contract. I've sent my PR stuff in or my uh, my headshot, uh, and now it's going to go into your hands, and you have to do something with it. You're the link to the public. That's right. So usually I'm relying very heavily on on the website, if I can't find information mm. in the press release coming from the agent um, about the concert coming up, I will go to the artist's website. Mm-hmm. And usually that's the safest bet because there has been on occasion an artist saying, why did you use that photo? Or why did you use that bio? It's outdated. And I'm like, well, I took it from your website. So, right. <laughs> you know, you have to keep that stuff updated because mm-hmm. that's the first place publicist or a marketing manager or program editor will go mm-hmm. to get the most current information to promote you. At the end of the day, we just want to promote you. We want a full house. Right, exactly. <laughs> and when, when people spend so much time studying and going to competitions and playing their heart out under such pressure, uh, this is kind of a way to recognize how much work they've put in by really presenting their best self to the public. Yeah, and I, I'm completely sympathetic to the artist who's just trying to get ready for tonight's concert. They're practicing repertoire for, for next week, and then they're starting new repertoire for an engagement you know, further down the road. I totally get all that. But every client I've spoken to who is proud of their website feels this amazing relief when they mm. know they can send a perspective a uh, concert presenter to their website to get beautiful photos, updated right. bio, and all of that. And and a lot of um, clients I've spoken to, they they just kind of like, oh, I don't like the way my website looks. I don't like the way I look. And I, I want to get rid of that. I want you to be bold and confident mm-hmm. in, in your marketing materials. When you give this uh, information, for example, to students who are training in conservatories and really have aspirations for a performing career, some of them may have the concern that they can't actually afford to get this kind of advice or help professionally to hire a stylist for a photo shoot, let alone to pay for makeup and a location and for a pianist case to find a piano to shoot with. Um, so what's your advice to them? Well, it doesn't have to be this huge five hour photo shoot with, with a glam squad, you know, and, <laughs> and all of that. You can keep it simple. What I usually recommend, especially to advanced students who are just getting ready to really put themselves out there is to share the cost of a photo shoot with another person. Mm -hmm. So if you have, you know, two or three pianists share a two hour photo shoot, the costs come down significantly. Now, obviously you might come out with five great photos instead of 15, but it's really way better to have five great photos and 20 that you can't use. Right. Um, Obviously hair and makeup has to be done you know, individually, you can't really share the cost of that. But if if you're a woman who's comfortable with doing your own hair and makeup, or you have a friend who can do that, the hair and makeup artist could just do touch ups. Mm -hmm. For men, it's usually just about powder, maybe a bit of basic grooming. So the cost can come down, but just don't skimp on the photographer. Mm -hmm. Because lighting, angles, all of that is everything. And if they can't afford to have me there to coordinate everything and be there to art direct the photo shoot, then I'm happy to just do a, a consultation, which right. would be a lot more affordable and, and just walk you through it. You take notes and then off you go. Now, I noticed in your video, you were uh, with this uh, person that was doing their photos and you were there was a glint in your eye, almost a shine. How do you feel when you're working with people at the, on, on set at the shoot? It's, it's very rewarding. Um, it's, it's just deeply rewarding for, for me to help someone, you know, sit, sit up straight and, and feel good Mm. about who they are. And, and it does help that I have a music background and so I can really identify with them. I mean, I don't need to be uh, a flautist to understand you need room, you know, uh, in, in your jacket to hold up your instrument this way, Mm. or if you're a violinist or, or what have you. I, I just find it's a very re- rewarding way to make use of my music degree 
Um, I'm still using it in, in a very different way. And mm -hmm. it's also something for all the competitors to think about. There's all these different avenues career wise obviously they want to be soloists and that's their number one goal mm -hmm. but many of them will go on to becoming professors of music or um, they might become an artist manager mm -hmm. or they might end up styling musicians the way i have i never predicted i would have wound up doing this really no i mean you know i for for me personally when i started piano i didn't want to be a concert pianist i knew that from the get-go but i wanted to be as good as possible while i was in it right but when I was um, in university and getting towards uh, getting my degree, I was thinking, well, what do I want to do with this music degree? So I wound up uh, going into PR and promoting um, orchestras, mm -hmm. which was very rewarding and teaching, which I still do. I still teach piano mm -hmm. and then styling musicians because here I get to flex my fashion muscle yeah. and, it, and it's just a lot of fun. When we were talking on uh, some point, I think it was last Saturday, so a week ago, I was talking to my old teacher, Veda Kaplinski, and she said one of the main things about teaching that's so important is to differentiate between the students who are extremely talented and have the potential to be soloists, and then students who maybe don't have that aspiration, and you shouldn't push them to that point, but to make concert goers out of them and to help them uh, to want to go to concerts. It seems to me that without great photos and a sense of self-confidence and a good image to present the public, that's also a factor that we need in order to put people in chairs at concerts yeah i mean ha, it can't hurt right, right. i mean it, it you know i mean if if you put two pictures together if you're if you're looking through you know uh the entertainment section our eye will just naturally be drawn to the more visually arresting photo right and you know, as classical people, there's a lot of things that will determine whether we'll go to a concert. It might be soloist based, repertoire based, mm -hmm. orchestra based. You know, there, there's different reasons why we might go to a concert. But if I see a really great photo and it intrigues me, that will lead me right there to read more about that artist. Right. And and then, you know, one thing leads to another. I'm buying a ticket and going to the concert kind of thing. So I'd love your opinion on this. Uh, if someone says after they interact with uh, someone who's just had new photos done or has presented their new photos, they've gone through a great photo shoot, they have a great image, and someone comes up to them after a concert or after they teach something and says, wow, you are exactly what I expected because you had such great photos, what does that kind of a review mean when someone notices that your photos are great and that you deliver on a good image? Oh, it's now that is music to my ears. <laughs> you, you know, when when you are representing who you are visually, as well as as a player, mm -hmm. you know these these things have to come together, and and so when I hear that, that that's very flattering, especially if I styled that photo shoot. Um, yeah. But also, if I suggest something for someone to wear. Um, Usually I see a bit of fear in their eyes and then and then they'll put it on and then they start kind of it's when they start grooming themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then and then I wait for it. And when they say, I never would have picked this out for myself. I'm like, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love I love hearing that. In fact, I, I lent this necklace uh, to a friend of mine last week going to a big uh, event. Really? And she she yeah, she said I because it's quite long. Mm -hmm. Um and and she said, oh, I never would have chosen that for myself, but I wore it. I felt great. Everybody mm -hmm. complimented me. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is such so, a concern for some people if they get involved with so-called media promotion of themselves and PR that they're going to get sucked into something that makes them look a way they're not comfortable with. So probably you have a lot of conversations with people about you can still maintain how you want to look and still be who you are. Uh, but you probably have a more objective eye about what's going to photograph well. Yeah, because I am always thinking about what's going to photograph well or film uh, well right. if, if it's television or, or or like what we're doing right now. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's a part of it too. And you know, I I really loved your your conversation with Veda Kaplinsky because uh, at one point you were talking about you know who and and there was another discussion too about um, who is the musician playing for. Yes, And because you can tell if they're playing just to please the jury, there's just something not s sincere about that. Um, but you can tell if the musician is just expressing whom they are and mm -hmm. and also feeding off the audience vibe. Mm -hmm. And I and I think what you wear is part of that. Like if you 
if you wore just to please yourself, well, we, we'd be all wearing sweatpants on stage. That's the most comfortable thing. <laughs> but 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 also, if somebody is dressing just to be notorious, that wouldn't fly either. Right. You, you, mm-hmm. you know, if they're deliberately wearing something very provocative or very busy and it detracts, you know, from the playing, we don't want that either. Like what I want to do is just step in and find a way to marry everything so that mm. you are who you are. You're dressing for yourself, but you want to look good and acknowledge mm-hmm. your audience. Yeah. And it's a sign of respect when you see someone on stage who's really put time and effort into the visual aspect of going to see a concert. The audience puts effort into dressing up for concerts. So maybe now we can transition to showing us a couple of examples of things for maybe future viewers of this that on uh, their first photographs or in their first photo shoot, photograph really well and some of your suggestions. Yeah. Now, some of these are just sort of everyday blouses that wouldn't necessarily be for stage because I wanted to talk more about print and pattern. Right. So, you know, something like this, um, you know, it's a pretty bold print. It's not bad and, and it's quite, you know, eye catching, but it is busy. Yeah. And and you want to do the strobe test. It, it, you know, if you start to see spots, that's not good, especially <laughs> when you know when we're on live camera like this. So something like this, I would I would veto. Mm. And and same with this. Now this happens to be very cute in person. I just want to say, but <laughs> um, on camera, it's it's busy. Right. And this would be the equivalent of playing too much pedal or pedaling over Bach. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, it, I it's do. Just, there's it, just too much movement there. Okay. So if you're interested in wearing like more of a, a print, this this one here, it's less busy. It's still bold. There's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't hurt your eyes too badly if I do that. Right. So this is getting uh, a little better. Are you saying people should shake their clothing and see how their eyes react to the movement in the clothing? Yes, because uh, it, it, if, if it's like this, if it's too jarring, you don't want to wear that on a television interview or a live stream interview right. or, 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 you know, film or anything like that. So I, that's why I, I do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, some of these are, are just too busy. Again, this is very cute in person, but it takes away from the face. Your eye just is drawn to that. Right. So sometimes I see that, um, you know, especially television interviews, they're not really thinking about what works on camera. Um, this is a very bold print that I would wear. There's a lot going on. And if you have a big personality, you could pull it off. What do you think of this one? It's big, <laughs> but it's I do big. like it. Yeah. So this might work better if, if you know there's going to be distance between you and the camera. Right. right there's a lot of color. Close, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a lot going on. Uh, this one might be a safer bet for people who like to wear black. Mm, mm-hmm. Is black good you know? for photo shoots in general, do you find? Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love black? I mean, look at me. I'm in black. Um, <laughs> but, again, if you accessorize it, that, that's kind of the key. Um, so this I love for on camera. It's a bold, rich, saturated jewel tone. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't take away from the face. And it makes a statement. And it's memorable. Right. Right. Uh, so I, I love okay. fuchsia on camera. And I also love this print because, again, there's a lot going on, but it's quite bold and it's not too busy. And I think it passes the strobe test. Right. Yeah, I so like that print. Who, OK. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some things. Now, if you do want to court controversy, controversy, um, this one's very bold and very daring. Wow. I don't want. Yeah, I'm not promoting cigarette smoking, just to be clear. So <laughs> I, I have actually not worn this because of because of the cigarette, depending on what I'm showing up for. Right. But it's 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 very memorable um, and it can't hurt. Here's the piece de resistance. Can't hurt. To ah, have some, uh, OK. Some glitter. Sequ- yeah, some sequins. So here's the back. Right. It's sequin. And, mm-hmm. and this photographs um, beautifully. And if you are wearing a necklace, you got to be careful if you're being mic'd mm-hmm. because this. Ah, uh, it, it makes a sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it really d- d- distracts. Um, and, uh, you, you know, you don't want that to happen. Okay. So sometimes if you do want to wear a necklace, you can wear something that sits flat. Mm-hmm. Aha. Right? Okay. Yeah. That's kind of pretty. And these are our bibs. They're made of fabric. 
Hmm. So if it's, if you wear it on black, it looks like it's part of the outfit. And here's another bib right here and they're quiet. So hmm. it's got all the glam of a necklace, but it's on black felt. So, so it's quiet. It, it, it's quiet. Yeah. It doesn't make any sound, uh, at all. You know, you're mentioning these things about what to wear, and it's striking me that you're thinking through a lot about the look and also the practicality, the setting, what is going to be the result of wearing this particular thing to be photographed or to be on camera. Yeah, and it's amazing, you know, how one small d distraction can take away from a performance. I, I went to hear a concert once, and, you know, the conductor, you know, was doing his thing, and he was wearing tails. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's two buttons right above the split of the, the tails. Yeah. One of them was covered in a very shiny fabric. The other button was a very dull fabric. So obviously mm. a replacement happened. Replace both of them because my eye kept going to the button. One was reflecting the light and the other wasn't. <laughs> and I couldn't tell you what he was conducting. I don't remember. All I remember <laughs> were the buttons. Uh, yeah. he, and and also um, when men are wearing suits, uh, especially if you're seated violinist, cellist, pianist, usually the pocket gapes open the white lining mm -hmm. and i don't know why clothing manufacturers line pockets in white especially when the pants are black right but your eye just goes there mm -hmm. um so it's worth having that replaced um and also i notice and also i'm just hyper aware of this stuff but i noticed um uh, one of the competitors actually at this competition, um, you know, she was wearing a gown and the loop right here mm -hmm. to hang up the gown was sticking out. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you always want to make sure that's tucked in. Um, right. All these all these little things. Cause I've, I've had my share of mishaps. I was once wearing heels mm -hmm. and performing something busy and the piano wasn't locked. So it started to roll from me. Oh. Um, <laughs> that was fun. Um, so I, I, I stopped wearing heels after that, uh, because, mm -hmm. because when I was trying to pedal, it, it was just too much. And another time I was practicing, you know, just wearing my watch and it had a chain. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing a crossover, my finger caught in the chain. <laughs> so I immediately ripped that chain off that watch. And then that was just when I was practicing. <laughs> so what, what a lot of performers do have to do is they should do a full, concert practicing in everything like literal dress rehearsal right you know j just to make sure that the clothing they wear will work because you know we're all humans sweat stains exactly. you know all these things you know mm -hmm. it, it happens right and you want to be comfortable and stylish so there are some options to the traditional uh, concert garb, but there's also that you have this eye for noticing these types of small details, uh, which I have to say personally, thank you for being this way because over our long contact, I've started checking these things before I go out on stage as well. And I double check all the things that Liz might say. Uh, Liz, what I'm hearing and what I'm getting is that someone such as yourself operating with such experience, uh, promoting classical music and understanding the image that the public has of us as performers uh, and musicians uh, really, really cares that we look our best and really cares that we present well for future employers and for future agents and management and so on. And that's really, really positive. So we're thankful that people like you exist, you know, because in, in schools, I think, I can't speak very generally, but it's not as often discussed this topic as in, you know, if you become successful as a musician, here are the first few things you need to do once you've graduated with your degree from a famous conservatory, won a big prize of an international competition, because between that moment and when you start really performing, a lot of us really don't know what happens and how much goes into the process of taking someone who is just starting to establish themselves into becoming someone whose very picture doesn't even need a name attached to it. We just know who that is. And, and, it, and you're speaking of just the industry. What about the audience all equipped with a smartphone with a camera mm -hmm. who, you know, gets a picture of, you know, usually most concert halls here, you know, North America will allow photography during applause. Um, so, right. you know, they're taking pictures and, you know, they're, they're going to post it, right? Which is free, you know, advertising and exposure. Right. So, you know, the better you look, the, the more often your, your photo will be circulated in a positive way. Exactly. Liz, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. This conversation has been extremely helpful. I especially love looking at all those patterns and your suggestions about photographs and that you've really built for us uh, an image of someone working with style and branding as a positive force in the careers of young musicians. So thank you for being with us. 
Thank you so much for having me. If anybody wants to shoot me a question, happy to answer it. LizPR.com. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to, to talk to you. Thanks, Liz. Everyone, thank you for the last two weeks in the competition studio. This is our last uh, meeting today in the English competition studio. The finals are going to start in a few hours from now, 7 p.m. in Bitgosh, and the results of the competition will be announced Excuse me, uh, later tonight around 10 p.m. So we look forward to hearing who the winners of the competition will be, who the prize winners are. And I thank you very much for joining me in the competition studio. I thank all of my guests, uh, and I look forward to seeing you at the next edition of the International Paderewski Piano Competition. Thank you so much. Take care. The 12th International Paderewski Piano Competition in Bydgoszcz. Live broadcast at www.paderewskicompetition.pl Są takie chwile w życiu, które zostają w pamięci. Gdy dźwięki otaczają nas z każdej strony, muzyka przytula. Najważniejsze, by ten czas spędzać z kimś, kogo kochamy. Lubimy, szanujemy, w miejscu, które jest dla nas czymś ważnym, do którego zawsze chcemy wracać. Harmonia Pomorska. Daj się przytulić muzyce. Możesz budować formy na siłowni i grać niesamowite solówki. Możesz oddać się pasji gotowania i miksować ścieżki. Możesz pielęgnować swoje rośliny i trygować chórem. Możesz uwieczniać piękne momenty i występować na wielkich scenach. W Akademii Muzycznej w Bydgoszczy stawiamy na Twoją swobodę i rozwój, dlatego dołącz do nas i poczuj, że naprawdę możesz.
Bydgoszcz, the capital and the largest city of the Kujawian Pomeranian region. It is a city of two rivers, the Vistula, the Burda and the historic Bydgoszcz Canal. Picturesquely located between forests, it was associated with water from the very beginning. Water is one of the city's elements, and the old granaries standing by the Bruda River tell about its past and the identity of its inhabitants. A remarkable object on the map of Bydgoszcz is the 18th century Bydgoszcz Canal. It contributed to a rapid development of trade and industry, and it associated its residents with the traditions of the skippers and inland navigation forever. The canal, along with the Vistula and Bruda River, is a part of the international E-17 waterway connecting Western Europe with the historic Krulewiec. The revitalized Roder's Mills on the Mill Island have become a place of cultural gatherings and concerts. The Mill Island itself is a vibrant heart of the city that offers world-class entertainment, not only in Opera Nova, but also in a picturesque natural setting on the stage built on the Bruda embankment. The city can be explored by boats or by a solar boat. From the water level, we can see even more clearly how the past connects with the present and modernity. The living museum created on the renovated Lemara barge tells about the traditions of skippers. From the marina of Bydgoszcz, we can set out in a canoe on a river journey around the city. The monuments of hydraulic engineering can be visited from the picturesque bicycle paths. And in the evening, you can rest in one of the multiple restaurants located by the Mwynówka River. Come. See. Feel it. Dzień za dniem, noc za nocą. Nasze życie upływa pod bezkresnym niebem. Marzymy o rzeczach wielkich, ale życzymy sobie rzeczy prostych. Myślami wybiegamy do przodu. Ale jesteśmy świadomi, że życie toczy się tu i teraz. Spoglądamy w niebo z dobrego miejsca na ziemi. Grand Piano.